Hey everybody! Today I'm going to show you a high-level overview of my general workflow through Blender and NIFScope to modify an outfit for Skyrim. I've chosen a beautiful, flowing, summer-type dress created by Carter for the Demonica race. And I'm going to convert this over to the UNP female body type for the standard human race. If you're not familiar with this amazing artist or their stunning outfits for Skyrim, then I encourage you to check them out over at Carter's house. Uh, Carter is a Russian artist, so you may not be able to read everything over there, but at least go and have a look at all the really pretty pictures. One caveat before I jump right in, uh, I am aware that tools exist already for converting outfits uh, from one body type to another. Uh, outfit Studio and Body Slide. I have actually not yet taken the time to learn those tools, uh, so I'm going to be showing you how to do this the long way. Um, I also think it's a really good idea to understand what's going on underneath the hood, even if you do use tools like Body Slide and Outfit Studio. Um, and yes, I will get around to those um, because I think they're great tools. Uh, I love that they create, modders create things like this to help other people out and bring more folks into the modding community. Um, so yes, I am definitely interested to do that. I just need more time. Anyway, uh, let's get on with this. All right, so, so step number one in the process is setting up your toolkit. Now the tools that I use are all free and open source or they come from the game itself. Uh, I use Blender version 2.49 the NIF Tools plugins for Blender, which you'll need, uh, NIF Scope, and I'm still using version 1.1.3 simply because it's the first version I downloaded and it does everything that I need and I just haven't been bothered to upgrade. Um, so if you use NIF Scope, your version may look different from mine, but you should be able to do all the same functions. Uh, I use Bethesda's full female skeleton right from the game. And I use various modding resources that are based on work from Grolf, Urshi, Diamond99, Eleonora, Hanais, and others. And I apologize if I butchered anybody's name. Um, but I just want to give a huge shout out to all of these modders. Uh, I'm sure they'll never know that they're the unsung heroes in my story here today. But um, they do great work. Go and, and show your appreciation by using and endorsing their mods and also show your appreciation by refraining from being obnoxious on their forums. I know that's a source of much frustration for these people who are giving their free time to create wonderful things for the rest of us to use. All right, so step number two is to blenderize the mesh file that you want to work with. So this involves using NIFScope to change the header, um, remove the materials from each mesh piece, and at this time, I will often go ahead and remove any mesh pieces that I don't actually want. So for example, in this case, I don't want the Demonica body or body parts. So I simply delete those right here in NIFScope until I'm left with simply the dress mesh pieces. Step number three, open Blender and pull in the body type that you want to convert to. Now this may require you to Blenderize it, just like we did in the last step, if you don't already have this prepared. I'm using a Blender file with the UNP Never Nude body. It contains animation sequences within it. Now this is a tool I converted from the original one created by Grolf for the CBBE body and modified by Urshi for UNP. And then I modified it further to use it with the body type that I like best in my game, which is this UNP Never Nude. Now if you really want to know more about that, you can see my modding adventures video number four for a really long-winded explanation. And in the description, I'll put the timestamp for the, just the uh, body conversion piece in case anybody wants to, to see how I did that. All right, step four. Import your blenderized outfit mesh. So the settings that are shown here and what I'm doing uh, are from the tutorials that I've listed in the description. Sometimes you may have to tweak these settings a bit to get the mesh to import, but generally what I'm using here have worked well for me. Sometimes the import can take a really long time, like this one actually. Uh, I suspect it has to do with the complexity of the mesh or maybe even the number of vertices. 
Step number five, get rid of unwanted stuff that was imported. Now that means deleting the skeleton that came over with the outfit mesh and also deleting any other bits that came over that you don't actually want. Now I don't delete any of the vertex groups because I really don't want to have to mess with weight painting or dismemberment partitions unless I have no other choice. You can always do this later if it's something that you find needs to be done. Step number six, add textures to the meshes. You can do this later, just like fixing other things, but I like to work with the meshes that are actually textured. I find that it's more fun and I really like being able to see if my changes to the mesh are going to result in weird distortions of the textures. You technically don't also have to use the textures that really go with the outfit, but again, that's what I like to do for the reasons I already listed. Step seven, go to town tweaking the mesh to fit the new body. Now there's one really important point here. If you actually need to move an entire mesh piece, be sure that you only do this in edit mode, meaning that you can actually see all the vertices. That's how you know it's edit mode. And also, just be aware that if you reposition a mesh to a different part of the body, you're going to have to redo its weight painting or it's going to behave strange when you put it in the game. This also applies to stretching meshes to cover parts of the body that they didn't previously cover. Now this is the most tedious part of the whole process and it can take a long time. I've actually spent days on end with some meshes, uh, moving individual vertices at a time in order to make a really complex shape fit. Like the one example it was a shoe and I had to fit it to a different foot mesh and all the angles had to be shifted, toes cropped differently, angles realigned, etc, etc. It was really complicated. A blender can be hard to learn as well and it's easy to forget all the nuances if you don't use it very often. Some of the most important functions in Blender are these. So you can use S and Alt S for scaling. O will toggle proportional editing either on or off. And then you can scroll to change the area of effect size. You can use H to hide vertices or objects. And then Alt H will bring them back. R will rotate. B I use a lot will allow you to drag select vertices. I tend to use double B, just hit it twice in order to get a circle to select. And then you use the, uh, I believe it's left um, mouse button to select. And then if you hold down the scrolling wheel, you can actually deselect with B. Control I will invert the selection. You can toggle see through uh, in the 3D header view. That means limiting the selection to whatever is visible. You can right mouse click to select a vertex and then hold down shift to keep selecting more. Shift R will repeat the last action. Control Z, one of the most important things to remember, will undo your last operation and it will undo uh, a number of different operations. You can actually set this in the default. Uh, mine is set to, I don't know, 20 or something. Uh, Control Shift Z will redo. Uh, so if you accidentally undo, you can just redo it again as well. And note that edit and object modes will each track these separately. To help with clipping, you can try shrinking parts of the body underneath the mesh. I would just caution you to not make it too weird. Uh, for example, don't let any parts turn inside out or anything strange like that, or it can really affect the weight slider. And contrary to the tutorials, I really don't like to delete body parts under the mesh. I know it can make a more efficient NIF file but I find it's really difficult to make sure that you delete exactly the same vertices for the zero body size and the one body slide, uh, one body size. And if you don't delete exactly the same vertices, it'll totally screw up the weight slider, which I'm planning to show you in a future video, actually. So this part is really cha challenging and it can be difficult to adjust the mesh without losing the original creator's intent and vision. All I can say here is that it takes a combination of scaling, moving, selecting different vertices and excluding others, various degrees of proportional editing, etc., etc., to get it close enough. It does not have to be perfect. Just good enough that you're not going to notice anything strange in the game. Practice definitely helps. 
And remember that everyone is going to have a different tolerance level for the degree of perfection required. If you're happy with the way it looks and you're going to put it in your game, then go for it. Step eight is to check for clipping and weight painting. So if you're using the animation sequence tool, then you're actually going to save yourself a lot of trouble of having to export the mesh, fix the NIF file, put it into the game, test it in the game, and then come all the way back to Blender to try again and fix any issues that you saw. That's what I used to do, and I know from experience that it can be a pain. But I'm now using the animation sequence tool, so I can check right here in Blender by using the arrow keys or by sliding the green bar in the animation pane to navigate through the sequence. Now clipping can be affected by both the mesh, the actual shape and where the vertices are, or by the weight painting. And in this example I'm showing you can see that I actually tried a mix of both to fix the issues that I had. Now I will say my weight painting skills leave much to be desired and I have to admit too, this was actually the very first time I've attempted to weight paint anything by hand. Now hopefully I'll get better and learn more about doing this by keeping at it. Um, but I think I got an okay result in the end. Uh, I know it's not perfect, but it's okay. I'm, I'm happy enough with it. I can play with it in my game and be perfectly happy. Now after I've made all of my changes, I run it through the animation sequence one final time just to make sure there's no obvious issues. And here in my example, it's looking pretty good. Step nine. Once the long, tedious part of the task is over and you're happy with how the mesh looks, then it's time to prepare it for export. If you still have a skeleton, like the animated skeleton that I still have in my example here, then delete it. Delete any remaining parts that you don't need, like in my example, the hands, head, feet, the other body size, the camera, and the light. And then also for each piece, make sure there are no leftover armature modifiers. At this point, it's time to import the skeleton for the body type that you're using. In my case, the UNP body without physics uses the vanilla skeleton. So I hit A to select all my pieces, and then I import and parent the vanilla skeleton that I separately prepared as a blenderized NIF file. And if you want to know anything about that, you can also um, see my Adventures in Modding video number four. All right, once that skeleton has been imported and parented, um, then I click on each piece and click the Make Real button in the armature section in order to have that modifier applied. Also check that the skeleton appears to be clean, meaning that it has a very simple name without any extra zeros or anything weird on it. Step 10. Perform your final checks and export this to a NIF file. Now because I'm super anal, I go through and I check everything one more time. I check that the dismemberment partitions are set. I make sure that all the vertices are selected for each piece. And I check the textures. Here in my example, you can see the body texture wasn't there, even though we could see it. So I had to redo that. And then once I'm sure everything looks good, I export it using the Fallout 3 default settings as per the tutorials listed in the description. Step 11 is to Skyrimify the NIF file that you exported. First, change the header back to 12 and 83. And while in the header, I like to rename any blocks that have strange names. Uh, for example, here you can see that these don't reflect the names of the pieces at all, and so I fix that. Then you remove all the materials, you fix the dismemberments, and then finally add back the materials that you want. Now to add back materials, I usually just copy and paste the materials block from the original file. You also need to add or copy paste over any transparencies or other texture related blocks that you'd like to be there. If your textures don't show up in NIF scope, then make sure you have it mapped to the appropriate folder in the render menu and also make sure the file paths that are listed are correct. For any body part meshes, meaning those that show skin, 
Be sure that you change the BS num UV sets to 1 and has normals to no. And check all of your parts for the vertex color flag. Make sure it matches in the nitrite shape data block and the BS lighting shader property block. If the BS lighting shader property says that it has vertex colors, then you need to be sure vertex colors is checked yes in the nitrite shape data and vice versa. If there's no vertex colors, make sure that says no. If you have extra bones that came over that aren't actually needed for this particular mesh, then consider optimizing the NIF by removing them. Step 12, test your new outfit in the game. So save your Skyrimified NIF and then add it into the appropriate mod folder so you can see it when you load up the game. Now the easiest way for testing is to just load it in as a replacer outfit. If you want it to be standalone, you can do that later when you actually know that it's right. It's also easiest to just use the same copy of your new NIF file for both the zero and the one size body for testing purposes. But just don't forget that you'll actually have to go and make the other body size if you eventually want to be able to really body slide for real. So here I've loaded up a character in the game and I've used the console to get to my new dress. I open up race menu to check that she's set to the maximum body size since the NIF file I made was for size one. And then I put on my new outfit and oh my god, I look so cute. There's no major clipping. The shape looks okay and the movement looks fine. And I'm just so excited because she looks great. Now, if the new outfit needs fixing, then you have to go back into Blender. You can make more changes and then repeat the previous steps starting at step nine. Otherwise, it's time to make the NIF for the other body size. So again, go back into Blender, fit the new outfit to the other body size, and repeat again from step nine. Now once all this is done, the final step is to proudly wear and enjoy your new outfit in the game. Dazzle dragons and yarls alike with your well-fitting fashions. And as always, be sure to credit and endorse any mod authors for their work if you've used someone else's original creation. And do not repost things or make things available to others without getting the mod author's permission. For the lovely dress in my example, again, all credit for this goes to Carter. Please go visit at cartermods.blogspot.com. And I just have to say, this is a completely unsolicited shout out, by the way. I don't know Carter personally, have never met them, but I'm just completely in love with his or her outfits. And I would encourage you to go check them out. So that's it. That's my Blender workflow in a nutshell. If anybody has tips to share or suggestions on how to do this differently or steps that can be done better, please do leave a comment. Uh, good luck with all your own modding adventures, and I will see you next time.